Good morning, beloveds. We had an unexpected day of rest today. Actually, not really. We knew that the weather was going to be awful. Um, and uh, so we prepared. <laughs> and Tom's apparently Tom's alarm goes off just a little bit before mine. And I was so deeply asleep, I didn't hear his alarm. And he turned mine off before mine went off. Uh, he got up, walked outside, was getting wet and was like, okay. So he went and turned my alarm off and I woke up about 45 minutes later and went, did my alarm not go off? And I asked him and he said, no, your alarm did not go off. And I went, okay, thank you. Um, because it's nasty and wet and cold and I didn't want to get out in that. Um, so instead, uh, I, I slept in about an extra 45 minutes and then uh, did a little bit of straightening around the house. Uh, we are trying to make a push into the office space. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, I, I still had a productive morning. I just didn't. So I did engage my mind and body, just not outdoors. Because it's wet and cold and it's like in the 30s and I'm like, and raining. No. No, I'm not. Well, I probably am made of a whole lot of spice, but not, you know, I'm not going to melt, but I will do wet. I will do cold. I do not do cold and wet. This is where I draw the line. So, all right. But we have, we are in February. It, it, we have now changed months. It is now February 1st. Our title is Right Action. The first quote is, they that handleth the matter wisely shall find good, and whosoever trusteth in the Lord, happy are they. And that is Proverbs 16.20. When we demonstrate today, what we demonstrate today, tomorrow and the next day, is not as important as the tendency which our thought is taking. That is Science of Mind 306. Do you ever come in conflict with people who live in the past? who spend so much time digging up dead events that they don't have time for the creation of new ones. Their days are cluttered with do you remembers. Not interested in today or tomorrow, they live on yesterday's glories. There are no new activities or actions to fill their present with excitement and joy. There is really only one wor life worth living. That is an active life where the command is forward march. Let events come, but also let them go. Let right action, divine action, take place through you. But remember that once God has created and experienced the results of this creation, it moves on to new action and new creativity. Call upon mind for guidance towards right action and always keep looking forward. The person who is forever turning their head and looking back almost always trips and falls. As the action of the moment becomes the action of the past, keep your eyes to the front and your thoughts on high, listening always for the still small voice and its command of forward march into right action and good. <clears throat> at that point, oh, at, at that point of communion within me, that place which is sacred and holy and inaccessible to other hum to any other human being. I now listen for my orders of the day. Softly, this rite of communion lifts the challenge and burdens of life from me and places me under the command and guidance of a power greater than I, leading me into right action and fulfillment. I look forward. I look ahead. I look to succeed. I did get in the dust this morning. <coughs> Woo! <clears throat> Woo, that was exciting. Okay. I do not look back even to the good which has come to me, but ever forward with expectancy and ex acceptance of even greater good. And that's W.A.M. I believe that's William Miller. Oh. 
sorry. <laughs> I just knocked everything loose in my head. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we we will we will talk about right action. I wonder if William Miller had any military experience, because uh, the only people who do forward march regularly are military or marching band. <laughs> I know because I was in the marching band, uh, and I grew up in the military. My father was in the Air Force uh, when I was born, so the first fourteen years of my life were actually my entire life. My mom retired, what, about eight years ago, 10 years ago? Dad got out when I was 14, but mom had gotten in. She didn't enlist, but she worked for the military, so forward march. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, my sinuses chose that moment to drain. Um, what I'm reminded of in in his, uh, when he was reading, is I, I've seen it a couple of times, the meme that I've seen a couple of times. What it says is, uh, it, it's talking about the, the, when you're sitting in a car, you look at the rear view mirror and you look at the front windshield and the front windshield is a whole lot bigger, uh, than the rear view mirror. It's like, it's not that we don't want to look back at the past, but it should only take up a little bit of our time, which is why the rear view mirror is so small. Um, what we want to be doing is looking one at the present, you know, what's going on around us and a little bit at the future. Because um, really, honestly, the only time we have is now. Uh, this moment that we are living in now, this the, what we are experiencing now, that is the that is the time that we have. And so, if we spend too much time looking in the rearview mirror, we're not paying attention to what's going on around us. We're certainly not planning for the future. So, uh, well, I'm not going to go all the way with William and say don't look back at the past because there are good memories. Uh, and sometimes we want to, we want to look back at those good memories and sometimes we want to take, you know, lessons that we've learned in the past and bring them forward and use them now. So, uh, but that's, that really, it struck me when I was like, oh yeah, no, the windshield, the windshield that we are looking at, at the world is much bigger than our past. Um, and and it's interesting when you when you realize that um oh wait where did that point go oh uh you know people who live in the past are stuck you know they're stuck and and i will the with 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 the with the uh alzheimer's being you know it's like they're, they are stuck in the past. That's what they have available to them. And I, and I wouldn't incur, you know, I'm not saying to, to, to drive, to drive, to drag them into the future or into the present. Um, and, but you are living in the present. And so you engage with them and you listen to them reminisce, but you realize that they're stuck and it's like, but you've got stuff to do and you can't spend all your time stuck in the past. You've got stuff to do. And, the, the spirit is moving forward, always learning new things through you. Um, and, uh, when, when we, when we, so when we spend too much time reminiscing, then we're not, we're not moving forward. We're not having new experiences. We're not, and we're not improving. Uh, we're not improving our lives. Um, and so that, that, I think that's his point. That's his point. It's like the past and, and Danielle said it on Sunday too. It's like the past is done. Whatever mistakes we've made in the past, we can't go back and fix them. Now we can carry the lessons forward and not make them again, which is a good thing. And if we spend too much, what is it? Um, it if you don't learn from the past, you're doomed to repeat it. Well, part of that is, you know, take your lessons, incorporate your lessons and move forward. You know, if you stay in the same place, you're going to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. And so it's like, look forward, move forward, um, go and create new experiences. Uh, and, and there was, there's another, uh, meme that, that 
on it's a play on the Robert Frost. It's like same old mistakes, fantastic, fabulous new mistakes. It's like well, let's let's go make new mistakes and learn new things, uh, or we don't have to make mistakes, but because that's a joke. But um, looking forward is very very important, super important, and uh, we really want to face forward and um, keep moving, which then again reminds me of the last book in the Narnia series, uh, in the Chronicles of Narnia, uh, Inward and Upwards, Inwards and Upwards. And that's, that's kind of the goal. It's like we're ever forever going within and forever going up that spiral. And when we backtrack, you know, we're traveling over paths, we're traveling over stuff we've already done. And we're not necessarily learning something new. Now, we may gather new information, and occasionally it is helpful to backtrack. But most of the time, we want to let, we want to let the past go and move forward. Now, carry the glorious memories with you. Talk about the glorious memories. Talk about the people, you know, that aren't with us any longer. Um, but do it in the present. Do it in the present. Don't live your life in the past. There's so much wondrous stuff going on around us all the time. If we're so busy looking in that rear view mirror, we'll never notice it. You know, we'll never notice all the little miracles that are happening around us all the time. And we don't want to wait until it's some big thing that gets our attention that brings us back into the present. So that's kind of my thought on William Miller today. Hmm. The mission, should we choose to accept it? He, he has that line, let events come, but then let them go, but also let them go. Um, keep your eyes in front and keep your thoughts on high, always listening for the still small voice. That sounds like a good mission to me. Um, I'm not telling you not to look at the past. What I'm telling, uh, what I'm telling you is not to live there, to, to move forward. To let all of those things in the past go, incorporate the lessons and move forward. All right. That's William Miller. And I'm still wondering if he's, you know, ex-military. <laughs> okay. So then the other mission is to do the, the spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. Um, sometimes the compassionate thing for yourself, it turns into the compassionate thing for others. Uh, I, my husband this morning, he got up and he, um, turned that alarm off when he realized that it was wet and we were not going to go out. And so, uh, that was a very loving, kind and compassionate thing that he did for me. Well, how can he do that? Because he practices on himself. Um, and it then turned into me getting up and getting some stuff done in the house. We are slowly but surely rearranging the house, uh, which is why then my nose went because mm, some of the dust. Yeah, we're cracking into areas that haven't been touched in a while. And it's loving, kind and compassionate and frustrating all at the same time. Uh, and sometimes that's what it looks like. Sometimes the loving, kind and compassionate thing you do is messy. Um, but it's, but it's good, you know, and part of that, this exercise of rearranging the house is letting stuff go. It absolutely is. Um, cause that's exactly what I said. What I was like, and I was like, I need to go through my closet because I got some new shirts. Well, I put the new shirts in and I haven't taken any of the old ones out. So, you know, and that is love and kind and compassionate. It looks like taking a deep breath before you speak. It looks like uh, taking a walk. It looks like sleeping in. It looks like um, taking, it looks like resting. 
It looks like uh, eating dessert first. It looks like enjoying a cup of coffee. It looks like calling a good friend and having an amazing conversation. Um, it looks like not saving the good stuff. It is about self care. And I, and I, and I'm, I make no bones about that, but it's also about making room for joy. It is, uh, which is why I include the eat dessert first. Don't save the good stuff. Make room for joy. No matter what is going on around you, um, you you can make room for joy. Uh, and and more to, more to the point, you are allowed to. Sometimes when everything is sad around you, you have a moment of joy, and then you want to stuff it because everybody else is sad around you. It's like okay, no, don't do that. Go and have your moment of joy. Go and have your moment of joy. Um, yeah, you don't necessarily want to do it with people who are going through stuff, um, but make room for yourself. And that's what the spiritual practice is about. Uh, it is also about connecting with the source of your own being, the center of you, that kernel of good that you are. Um, so that's why I suggest it every day. I do intend, it's like, you take days off from exercising. You don't take days off from spiritual practices. But what you do do is vary your spiritual practices. So um, please do that. Uh, and it is about creating a habit. Uh, it is about creating that first response. So no matter what happens around you, then you, um, you can respond lovingly, kindly, and compassionately. When you meet people that need a little extra, then you have plenty to share because you've been practicing. And you've created a bank or more importantly, you've connected to the infinite source of love, joy, and um, kindness, compassionate, all of that. Okay. Um, so please, it is a spiritual practice. I promise you. Um, I do encourage you to engage your mind and your body unless you're taking an unexpected day of rest. Uh, I do encourage you to drink plenty of water. It's always super important, especially when your sinuses decide to let go. Um, that, that water kind of helps that process. And your brain works better when it's hydrated. I do encourage you to get early in your day bright light. Um, as I understand it, it's going to be Friday before we see the sun, possibly. So artificial light counts. It does count. Um, it is about circadian rhythms. It's about resetting those hormones. And uh, so you sleep better at night. You have more energy during the day. It is a natural balance. We are natural, the, you know, we are natural creatures. We are spiritual be spiritual creatures having human experiences and human experiences come with circadian rhythms. It's science. You can look it up. All right. Uh, the more that you can do to get into a natural cycle, a natural rhythm, uh, it the, the, the more it'll serve you. So it's like we want to align with God. And some of that is aligning with the natural cycles, the natural rhythms of our body and our world. Um, and, uh, in the words of Ernest Holmes, open the windows of your soul, allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around you all the time, all around us all the time, because it's a state of mind. It's a state of consciousness. And when we learn that, when we learn that, then we learn to create it ourselves for ourselves. Uh, and once we do it once, the next time it's easier and it gets easier and easier and easier after that. And then heaven ceases to be a place and can become any place. And if you want to practice hardball met metaphysics can become every place. And it's possible. It is absolutely possible. We've had many, many, many great examples, um, over the, you know, the millennia or, or, or so, uh, you know, with Jesus being one of the master teachers of this. Uh, but there have been others and more recent. Uh, I just came across uh, uh, Reverend, uh, Dev, Reverend Desmond Tutu's book, uh, The Way of Joy, I believe. Uh, and somewhere I have a book that he wrote with, uh, no, that's The Way of Love, and maybe that's the Archbishop of Canterbury. But, Dev, but Desmond Tutu wrote a book with the Dalai Lama. So there's two really good examples right there uh, about being able to create heaven on earth. You know, 
It's not just in the past. As Meister Eckhart says, what good does it do me if the Christ was born 2,000 years ago, if the Christ is not born in me today? All right? That's what we're talking about. Uh, that the, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So the password is love. The key word is love. All right. Uh, and you can always take him as advice. Look for the good and praise it. So... I guess I'm at the social media part where I remind you we are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark on the social medias that we are. I am the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. Uh, please feel free to go and like and subscribe and share when you, especially when you get good content. It's like, hey, everybody needs to know this. Please share it, you know? Um, and then if you want to know what's going on with the center, email info at creativelife.org. There are a whole bunch of um, class, uh, book studies going on. And the cool thing about book studies is you can drop in and out of those as you have time. Um, and you can also show up even if you haven't read the book. Uh, the discussion will probably be better if you do read the book, but you know what I'm saying. So um, please take it take advantage of that. It's a good, the, the classes and the book studies are a good way to feed your soul. And the practitioners doing them, do them because they're interested in the material. It, it's not a choy, chore for them. It's a joy. Um, where was I? In my, email info at creativelife.org. The hot links are hot. Click here now. It'll either take you right to the information or to the person that'll help you get the information. Okay. So now I'm at the part where I encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonder-filled day, an awesome day, a stay warm day, a stay dry day, a be careful out on the roads day, a uh, get stuff done day, a take care of the the dust day, uh, drink a little extra water day, um, do what you need to do day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God. You are a divine spark. You are a brilliant light. You are spirit in action. You are God in motion. You are a godling in whom God is well pleased and well represented always and forever because it is a state of grace. And the cool thing about a state of grace is it doesn't have to be earned and it can't be taken away. We are made, we are made by God, of God, for God. That is the state of grace that we live in. Okay. I will remind you, Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow, uh, in, in, no matter what the weather is. <laughs> so take care of yourself. Know that you are loved, and I will see you next time.